later on. Uh, but I want us to now get into that conversation uh, on femicide in the country. We've seen two women or two cases of women brutally murdered uh, in the last few weeks. Um, in studio, I'm joined by Michelle Oyuga. She is the Senior Program Officer, Women and Governance from AFIDA, that is the Federation of Women Lawyers. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you for having us. Right, I think first things first, we've seen the, 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 the word femicide a lot in the past few days. And of course, this is in relation with the death of Starlet Wahu and the lady who was also killed in Roy Sambo. Mm -hmm. Maybe just for the audience to understand, mm -hmm. how can you define femicide? Uh, uh, femicide is a form of uh, one of the forms of gender based violence, and we consider it to be the, an extreme form of gender based violence. Um, it is the intentional killing of, of, of women because of their gender really and and uh it is categorized as um, violence against women which mm -hmm. is a form of gen gender-based violence mm -hmm. yes is this the first time we're seeing this case in the country no um we have received reports um, as FIDA, and there have been reports that have been uh, recorded by other institutions like counting, uh, counting dead women. Um, so the numbers, we have, uh, like in 2019, there were, there were reports that about 109 women reported cases mm -hmm. of femicide, women who were targeted and killed. We have also seen that in 2021, 2020, the there were statistics, uh, 39, 18. Mm -hmm. And now uh, this year, the beginning of the year, we. Uh, headlines, uh, uh, reports of femicide hit, hit the headlines. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the case of Starlet Wahoo, and then now the recent case of uh, the lady who was killed at Roy Sambu. Right. So these are uh, just um, a bit of the cases that um, are happening mm -hmm. that have been reported and that have been captured by the media. Mm -hmm. But indeed, um, uh, women are being killed. Some of these cases go unreported, or they are reported, but they don't come out in the media. Mm -hmm. yes. Why don't you think sometimes some of them come out of the, like the media doesn't know this information or are underreported? Um, I, I think it's all about um, awareness um, and I think confusion at the time right. because um, wh when these issues happen, um, some, sometimes the, the cases are reported to, put to the police stations and uh, they, do, they, they don't really make news uh, mm -hmm. based on the magnitude of the offense or the violation. Mm -hmm. And then also even looking at how, where, uh, when the Stanley uh, Tuahu uh, case and even the Rizabu case was reported, mm -hmm. conversations on, on social media were pointing to victim blaming, vi right. victim shaming, stereotypes, discrimination. So I think, um, you know, the, the, the women who are killed, they are not faceless, they are not nameless. They also have family and friends behind them. So mm -hmm. I think uh, when this happens, family or friends sometimes also just fear coming out to report, mm -hmm. fear of victimization, their child being victimized or shamed mm -hmm. for having been at a certain place, uh, for maybe how they portray themselves, because sometimes it's also about perception. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes people share away from coming out to report, report these cases because of the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, or for them, you know, them fearing that they can be shamed because of having relations with, with, the, with the victims of these violations. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. form of stigmatization, yes. if you'd like to call yes. it. Um, but like, I wouldn't want to use the word causes, but of course these cases are there. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are certain triggers or is it an influence like social media sometimes that leads to such cases? Mm -hmm. So um, we have been having conversations with different stakeholders. And one of the emerging issues is uh, technology facilitated gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Right now, so many people are exposed to social media. Um, when you interact with young people, they'll tell you parties and events are organized online through WhatsApp and mm -hmm. through all this. Uh, all these platforms. So yes, there are vulnerabilities um, and risks that come with um, internet, internet exposure. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we were having conversations with, young, with university students and they were telling us how mm -hmm. uh, students or young people are being lured through social media. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the element of our social norms, how we are socialized, right. um, substance ab abuse, um, power dynamics, socioeconomic issues. So it is, um, 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 it's a mix of issues 
that contribute to uh, violence against women, that contribute to uh, femicide, and that contribute uh, overall to uh, gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about in terms of awareness? Mm -hmm. For instance, from where you sit um, at FIDA, mm -hmm. is there any form of awareness that you're creating or even talking to, apart from just gathering information, mm -hmm. but telling them, okay, so this is what you can do to protect yourself? Are there such steps that FIDA mm -hmm. has put in place? So as an institution, we are, uh, our vision, Mm -hmm. is uh, a society that respects and upholds the rights of women in Kenya. So over the years, um, um, since uh, we were formed in 1985, we have been working to, pro to um, amplify the rights of women and to also address barriers that impede women from realizing their rights, and one of them being gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. So there, um, as, a, as, a, as, an as a legal institution, we have been, um, of course, pushing for policy and legislative reform, but policies and legislation are not enough. They have to be implemented. So, of course, working with different stakeholders, duty bearers, rights holders, to ensure that the laws and policies that have, put, have been put in place are actually working to prevent mm -hmm. and to respond to gender-based violence. I can, uh, um, one, of the, the, as an, one of the laws that we have is the Sexual Offenses Act yeah. um, that addresses uh, sexual violence. Uh, there's also the protection against domestic violence that speaks to um, violence within a domestic setup. These are some of the very progressive legislations that we have that even give, um, have provisions for purposes of prevention and response. But whereas we have these laws, mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing, um, you know, violations, uh, you know, are going on right um and, and so we are saying that it's not enough to have legislation it's important for all uh, stakeholders to come together collectively mm -hmm. to find uh, or to invest in ways to prevent and not just to respond to gender based violence so mm -hmm. yes there's the policy and legislative reform bit that we handle mm -hmm. but we also um appreciate that uh, women do not live in a vacuum they live in communities right so whereas our mandate is to look into women's issues we also work with dif different stakeholders to raise awareness on the importance of, um, of, of, of peace in the community for, you know, not to choose violence. So uh, creating that awareness for people to be able to live in harmony, creating awareness around um, risks, mm -hmm. uh, vulnerabilities, um, creating awareness uh, to duty bearers to put in place mechanisms to prevent mm -hmm. and respond to gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. So yes, Awareness at the local, at the grassroots level, mm -hmm. uh, with different stakeholders, uh, 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 carrying out advocacy at the regional level, at the international level, because we also have treaties and conventions mm -hmm. that give us uh, good frameworks that we can employ at our domestic level. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we also provide we also provide uh, legal aid support um, to women and girls who have experienced uh, different forms of violence. Right. And, and we also, there are instances that we also watch brief because the mandate lies with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we provide, we watch brief on behalf of these clients to ensure that, um, you know, that uh, they're able to access justice um, in an expedient manner. Mm -hmm. uh, without, you know, undue re regard to technicalities and all that. Right. Um, and then we also provide psychosocial support because sometimes um, a person needs to heal even before mm -hmm. um, they go through the rigors of the legal system. Right. So we have been investing um, a lot in the prevention and response to gender-based violence. And as we speak, yeah. um, in December, we were part of the 16 Days campaign, yeah. um, Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. And it is shocking that just after the campaign ended, in December, on right. December 10th, we are seeing these shocking killings mm -hmm. um, at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to ask, um, in terms of, I don't know if you're comfortable with this, but what does the law state, like in terms of charges, if someone is found guilty, mm -hmm. is there a certain prison sentence? Would you be aware of such mm -hmm. charges? Okay. So um, there are different provisions that address violence against women mm -hmm. that address um, so femicide in this case would fall uh, would be categorized um, as murder right so that is taken care of by the penal code mm -hmm. that um, that that addresses um, you know instances of murder attempted mm -hmm. murder and all that mm -hmm. yes. how do you how would you advise someone um, let's say a family that's going through that victim blaming or the family is now being stigmatized mm -hmm. 
how would you advise a family that's going through that? Because naturally, even on social media, we've seen that, yes, this girl has gone through it or has been murdered, but then the blame comes back to her. Mm -hmm. How would you advise the family to deal with that? Um, just scrolling or you know going through social media and just looking at twitter mm -hmm. and, and, and you know looking at the posts it is disheartening mm -hmm. that uh with the gruesome murder with the with, with the gruesome um yeah, murder murders, that yeah. we're still seeing people making you know fun mm -hmm. of this situation right people throwing shade um, at these women and branding them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, s certain names and making jumping jumping into conclusions, um, you know. So it shows that there's a social ill. It just shows that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, for us to begin to victim shame, we don't even understand the circumstances or whatever biases that we might have. It it just playing out and it becoming a. A women versus men you know kind of a conversation mm -hmm. and jumping into conclusions about um, you know people's demeanor or character but it it must be said and it must be stated very clearly that no one deserves to die yeah, yeah? regardless of their lifestyle no one deserves to die in that um, in that manner That's so um, we want to um, appreciate um, the, the, the security agencies mm -hmm. of course for taking caution uh, with regards to you know um, preserving the identities or even you know the, the manner of um, how they have handled the case, uh, for instance the mm -hmm. the Roisambu case, yeah. Right. Um, but there have been people who have been careless uh, with the photos. We have seen the graphic photos being shared online, right. so you can imagine the psychosocial the, the effect that has um, on their families. Because remember, these people are not faceless; they're not nameless. They have family, they exactly. have friends, they have colleagues. So we really need to be as uh, sensitive mm -hmm. as we engage with different sectors. as well say that you need to be sensitive mm -hmm. um, uh, on how you report, on how you share the images. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice to, uh, to the families, of course, at this time they are grieving. Right. And um, I, I mean, it's shocking to all of us um, just seeing the report, what has been reported, and even some of these images online. Right. So, at this moment, of course, is just to um, to say poorly to the families, mm -hmm. and 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 to um, uh, of course urge the security agencies to ensure that um, the families are able to get justice. Mm -hmm. But from now, I think the psychologists will tell us that there is need for even them seeking psychosocial support mm -hmm. uh, because this is quite traumatizing. I can imagine. Yes, I've also seen a. A bit of graphic pictures online mm -hmm. but away from that apart from what FIDA is doing mm -hmm. do you think the government is doing enough do you think the ministry is involved with gender doing enough to create that awareness mm -hmm. and to make sure that such cases don't necessarily pop up as much as we've seen now mm -hmm. so right now the catchphrase of course is Airbnbs yeah right. so everyone wants to know what is this Airbnb and who are all these people who are going to Airbnbs and, and, and there's a react, re, their reactions, um, you know, at this moment. And, and it's just that the two women who um, have been murdered, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, were murdered in Airbnbs. Yeah. But this is, this is a conversation we have been having over the years, not just as FIDA, but as different partners, flagging out the need or highlighting the need to, ad to, to address gender-based violence in totality. Yeah, we have been working with the with the with the, with the gender technical working groups ac across the the country, mm -hmm. identifying uh, uh, you know ways to prevent, ways to address. Different counties have gender-based violence policies. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that uh, identify mechanisms for prevention and response. So I think at this moment we need to go back. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and look at um, some of the measures we have identified as preventative measures. Mm -hmm. Scale up uh, those measures and not just wait to, to respond, but also invest in response. How mm -hmm. do we ensure that and f uh, if, if, uh, if people um, undergo violence or end up being killed, how do we ensure that uh, their families or they, they themselves get justice for the violations. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, as a country, our, our country committed to ending gender-based violence right. um, uh, at the uh, Generation Equality Conference that happened a while back. A while yeah. back. And we identified um, investments that we wanted to make 
um, coming up with a fund, investing in mechanism, investing in different ways. So just going back uh, to what we, to our commitments, mm -hmm. um, working with different working with the security agencies. Are taking a community approach. I was shocked uh, mm -hmm. when I saw the, the footage of uh, the South B incident, the right. Standard Work incident. Yeah. You can imagine that uh, this, the, sus the suspect right. you know, was seen in an elevat elevator with blood all over, went down the stairs, and there were people who, who, who saw him. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, um, as, as being a good neighbor, uh, are we able to raise, you know, this person looks suspicious, there's something suspicious going on here, and reporting. But you've also uh, received concerns that there are girls or ladies who, right. you know, um, undergo, underwent, uh, who are threatened, or who have been reporting these cases and no action is taken. So we need to take a community approach mm -hmm. from, you know, at a family level, are we able to identify, you know, red flags? Are we able to mm -hmm. talk to our, our, you know, our relatives, our young people? These are the red flags. This is what you should look. You should look uh, when you're going out on a date. Mm. Yeah, more practical yes, more, more than practical. just the technical. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So identifying risks, um, addressing vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. how do we ensure that? Uh, that people are not taking advantage of uh, of people's social economic situations. People are not taking advantage of people people's naivety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are looking for love. People are looking for all kinds of support. How do we ensure that we put in place measures? Mm -hmm. And if people are running Airbnb business, are we able to regulate um, such businesses to mm -hmm. ensure that um, the security for persons who need to use those services. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, we've seen reports also of um, some of the suspects being arrested are foreigners. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. You, particularly even the Risambo incident, mm -hmm. um, a foreigner is tagged onto that particular case. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Um, I think um, we saw, we, there was the media um, footage mm -hmm. of the suspected uh, person who accessed the house. Mm -hmm. um, as at now, they are suspects. Right. Yeah? Yeah. But then, the manner in which the, the lady was yeah, mutilated, mm -hmm. I mean, that is shocking. And um, yeah, people have come up with a, a number of uh, theories as mm -hmm. to why that would happen because it's very strange right. and a lot of people are linking it to rituals, rituals and all right. those things yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so at this point um for me i would say there are still suspects of course people are innocent until proven guilty that's now for the court system to determine mm -hmm. um but um we also have to appreciate uh, the manner in which the police have also moved with speed mm -hmm. um making arrests that's a good start and and we hope that um at the end if they are the real killers right that they will be brought to book right yeah. finally as we wrap up maybe now that we've seen these two cases reported and all that what do you think should be the way forward in terms of just protecting women when it comes to such mm -hmm. cases? So many, um, FIDA has come out to condemn um, the, uh, the murders of these girls. And, and even last year when we were, and many years we have always come out to condemn, um, you know, violence against women, femicide and all this. So yes, right now we have reacted to this particular case. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important for us to now move forward to ensure that other young people women and even men are also being killed yeah right so it's important for us to um go back to the drawing board and find out how do we invest in prevent preventative measures mm -hmm. how do we engage with young people how can we work with the government how can the government invest in ensuring that uh, measures are taken uh, are put in place to prevent um, the different manifestations of gender-based violence. I know countries like um, uh, South Africa have come up with uh, mm. a national strategy on addressing femicide. How can we, how can we, uh, can we replicate some of these strategies here in Kenya mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, there's a multifaceted approach or even a multi-sectoral approach right. in how we address uh, gender-based violence, creating awareness. Mm -hmm. Working with the, with 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 uh, human rights champions, working with including men in this conversation, mm -hmm. yeah? working with institutions of higher learning, uh, working with you know the community community policy, you mm -hmm. know, even us just coming out to say you know you, you know in the older days 
you know, people in the community belong to the community, and people would know, ah, this is happening here. So how do we go back to ensure that we report mm -hmm. suspicious activities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, 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 we take preventative measures. Of course, um, would not want to blame the victims for where they were and what not. Mm -hmm. But of course, just taking preventative measures, identifying the hotspots, identifying mm -hmm. the drivers. Mm -hmm. If the drivers are substance abuse, the drivers are social, economic, uh, inequalities. Yeah. How do you? How do we work to ensure that we address those inequalities that do not make people vulnerable mm -hmm. to risky behavior? Right. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. I think that has wrapped up very well. Thank you for that conversation. That is Michelle Oyuga. She's a senior program officer, women and governance for FIDA. That is Federation of Women Lawyers. Thank you so much for the conversation. I want us to take a short commercial break here on News Center. We'll be back with more stories. Stay with us.